So the AI robot race is on. Meta is now officially planning to build their own humanoids. Elon Musk says Optimus 3 is where most of his brain power is going right now. And Google just unveiled a robotics model that can actually search the web and interact with humans in the real world. Let's get into it. All right, so as this article states, Meta wants to become the backbone of humanoid robots, specifically the software backbone. Andrew Bosworth, Meta's chief technology officer, says he doesn't care about Meta being a hardware manufacturer itself, but wants to focus on licensing its software to other manufacturers. So basically, just like how Google's Android runs most of the world's smartphones, even though hardly anyone actually owns a Google Pixel, Meta wants to be the Android of humanoid robots. Bosworth even calls this Meta's next AR size bet. For context, Meta is thought to have committed over $100 billion in cumulative investment into its augmented and virtual reality portfolio, which includes projects like the newly released Meta Ray-Ban display. He also mentioned their new super intelligence AI lab is already working with the robotics team on a so-called world model that can quote, do the software simulation required to animate a dexterous hand. So yeah, it's ambitious, and the article notes it'll still be years before Meta could realistically power third-party robots. But this definitely sets the stage for the robot race. All the major players are in now. And speaking of major players, Google just introduced Gemini Robotics ER 1.5 a new family of models built to power the next generation of physical agents. This is kind of like the convergence of reasoning models and robots. They can now think for longer and actually do more complex tasks, such as sorting these fruits, as you can see on screen. These new models can also power a variety of form factors, from robotic gripping arms to entire humanoid robot bodies folding your laundry. And as I mentioned in the intro, Gemini Robotics can actually search the web like a reasoning model, and then translate that knowledge into real-world action. One of the coolest demos showed the robot being asked to sort trash into a compost bin, but composting rules are different depending on where you live. So the robot actually went online, looked up the local city regulations, and then used that information to decide which items went into the compost versus recycling or garbage. This is a pretty big deal, because it's not just following hard-coded rules, it's actually reasoning about the context you live in, and then applying that knowledge in the physical world, just like a human would. Now, while Google is focused on making robots smarter and more adaptable, Elon Musk is obsessed with making them scalable. He said recently that Optimus 3 is where most of his brain power is going right now, and his big focus isn't just on building a capable robot, it's on vertical integration. Check this out. We're finalizing the design of Optimus version 3. That really is going to be a very remarkable robot. It will have the, essentially the manual dexterity of a human, so meaning a very complex hand, an AI mind that can navigate and comprehend reality, and it will be made in very high volume. Uh, those are the three things that are missing. Like if you see any other um, robotics uh, company, they're missing those three things. Those are the three really hard things. I, I spend actually at this point more of my mental cycles than anything, anything else, any other single thing on Optimus. That's, that, that's solving for uh, real world AI, uh, all of the electromechanical issues of Optimus, the, the supply chain and production challenges of it, because we have, there is no supply chain that exists for humanoid robots. So it has to be, we have to recreate it from scratch um, and which requires doing a lot of vertical integration. So yeah, this is where I think XAI really has the edge. The fact that Tesla isn't just building a robot, they're building the entire supply chain around it. The software, the chips, the factories, the data, all under one roof. True vertical integration. And of course, the AI brains for these humanoids will likely come straight from XAI's models. Which brings us to our next piece of news. Grok4 Fast now has a 2 million token context window that is double the size of Claude, Gemini, and Meta, and five times the size of GPT-5. This basically means you can now feed the model your entire codebase with no issues, or the equivalent of roughly 1.5 million words, which is like dozens of books. 
Now, in other AI news, OpenAI quietly rolled out a new product this week called ChatGPT Pulse, available only for select pro users. Pulse is basically a new way for ChatGPT to proactively deliver daily updates. It pulls from your past chats, your feedback, and even connected apps like your calendar, and then packages all that info into a personalized feed. Think of it as ChatGPT working for you in the background while you're asleep, gathering the stuff it thinks you'd want to know, and then presenting it at a specific time, almost like an AI morning brief, tailored just for you. I'm not a pro user, so I don't have access yet, but this feels like the start of a new way to consume content. Instead of surfing the web or doom scrolling social media, you could just let ChatGPT curate it for you. And over time, it learns your preferences. Almost like TikTok's For You page, but powered by an AI that actually knows your life. And now, speaking of OpenAI quietly doubling down, they just launched something called GPT Val, a new benchmark meant to measure how models perform on real world, economically valuable tasks. Unlike academic tests, GBT Val covers 44 actual occupations, everything from software engineering to legal work to healthcare, and challenges models to deliver real work products like legal briefs, slide decks, engineering plans, etc. The goal is to push AI evaluation past toy prompts and into tasks that actually pay the bills. And the results are pretty wild. On blind, pairwise comparisons against industry professionals, Claude Opus 4.1 came the closest to human-level parity, with GPT-5 high not far behind. OpenAI's O3 and O4 models also showed strong progress, while other models like GPT-40 lagged way behind at just over 12%. Claude Opus 4.1's score here is actually insane, and it's honestly surprising that OpenAI even published this considering they lost on their own benchmark. What's even more interesting though, is the trend line. Model performance is scaling almost linearly over time. Each new generation, O3, GPT-5, now Claude Opus, gets closer and closer to that 50% parity line with human experts. And if this continues, the next wave of models could actually surpass industry professionals on some of these tasks. In only a few short years, we will have gone from LLMs not even existing to LLMs replacing expert humans on real-world tasks. Pretty insane. This is definitely the benchmark to watch going forward. And now, we have some breaking news. At the time that I was making this video, Anthropic actually dropped Claude 4.5 Sonnet, what they're calling the best coding model in the world. It's the strongest model for building complex agents, it's the best model at using computers, and it shows substantial gains on tests of reasoning and math. So here are the benchmark scores. As you can see, it performs especially well on agentic and coding tasks, as they mentioned. And most notably, it achieves a score of 82% on SWE Bench Verified, which is actually insane. Our best coding benchmark is about to be saturated. They also gave Claude Code a fresh new look, and added a new checkpoint feature. And this part is wild, they launched a temporary research preview called Imagine with Claude, where the model literally generates software on the fly. No predetermined functions, no pre-written code. It's live for Max users for only five days. So if you've got access, definitely go try it out. Now, that's pretty much everything on this release. Pricing stays the same as Sonnet 4, but based on these benchmarks, this might be the strongest all-around model right now. We'll have to see how the community reacts though. And if you've already tried it, definitely let me know what you think down in the comments. Finally, to wrap up this week's AI recap, there was this post from OpenAI researcher Sebastian Bubeck that made a lot of noise in the AI community. He writes, Yet more evidence that a pretty major shift is happening, this time by Scott Aronson. So Scott Aronson, one of the most respected theoretical computer scientists in the world and an advisor at OpenAI, shared that GPT-5 actually helped him solve a serious math problem. Now, I'm not going to pretend like I understand what this math problem is, but from what I can tell, he asked GPT-5 to solve a super hard math problem, it failed, and instead of quitting, he helped GPT-5 refine its reasoning step by step almost like he would a grad student. 
Within half an hour, it gave him a clever construction that actually worked. One he admits he would have praised if a human student had come up with it. Aronson calls this the most quintessentially human intellectual activity, proving new results in math and complexity theory. And we've now seen this from GPT-5 on several occasions. So yeah, I don't know about you guys, but it feels like we're on the brink of something huge. We're starting to see new minor discoveries here and there, but I expect any moment now, we will get something huge. Something unprecedented. Anyways, that was all the news for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and as always, I'll be catching you guys in the next one.